Hello and welcome to the Alliance for Democracies, the Populist Dialogues. My name is David Delk and I'm your host. Today our guest is Linda DeLucia. She is with the Oregon Alliance of Retired Americans. She recently did a presentation for the Ask Me uh, retirees group and I attended and I thought that it was uh, such useful information that she might do it for a larger audience so I've invited her here today so thank you for being here thank you for inviting me sure and you're going to be talking about Medicare Med Med Medicare Medicaid and Social Security and Social Security so why don't you just go ahead okay very good um, let me just uh, reiterate that the presentation today is about Medicare, Medicaid um, under Obamacare or the Affordable Care Act and I'll be comparing it with what the proposals are from Governor Romney and Paul Ryan and we'll touch on Social Security under both men as well. Um, I just do want to note that I'm not looking at the total Affordable Care Act as it goes across the board for everyone. I'm just looking at Medicare and Medicaid um, as it applies to those programs. So okay, let's get started. Um, we will start with Medicare. Uh, Medicare under the Affordable Care Act or Obamacare, um, since everyone's calling it that, I'll call it that too. If you are on Medicare today, uh, you are on Medicare under the Affordable Care Act or Obamacare. And pretty much um, Medicare is chugging along as it usually has, except you have picked up a few additional benefits. Um, the first of those benefits is that um, you now get free yearly checkups without any deductibles or co-pays. And you also get free screening tests, such as mam uh, mammograms, colonoscopies, blood tests, uh, anything that a doctor uses to screen for illness um, are totally free now. Um, another benefit that you have, are getting, or you will be getting, is the closing of the donut hole. Not everyone knows what the donut hole is in Medicare. What it is is, is something that was enacted under the Bush administration. Um, and roughly, Medicare pays the first $2,800 to $3,000 of your prescription, uh, Medicare prescription D uh, drug costs. And then you're liable for 100% of the costs of drugs until you get to about $6,500 when Medicare then kicks in again. So under uh, Obamacare, that break between those two numbers is, uh, is going to close. So eventually you will be covered by, uh, for drugs uh, for whatever your needs may be. Um, and again, it will fully close in 2020. So in addition to those two things, um, from the savings that uh, President Obama has gotten out of the program, there are eight more additional years of solvency in the Medicare program. Medicare actually is, was slated to begin having some financial problems as early as 2016 or 2017. That doesn't mean it would become fully insolvent. It would just start to have some financial difficulties. But through savings in the program, um, they were able to add eight more years uh, until 2024 where the program is fully solvent. Okay, and then um, I'm just, uh, just to tell you what the donut hole is, um, for 2012, I've included some information. Um, in 2012, uh, the Medicare Part D drug benefit donut hole uh, is from $2,930 to $6,657.50. In between those numbers, you pay the cost of drugs. However, beginning in 2012, if you fall into this donut hole, um, you will receive a 50% discount on uh, name brand drugs and a 14% government subsidy on generic drugs. So that's a big change from paying 100% of the costs. And then again, by 2020, it'll be gone completely. Okay, and so how did they get these savings? How were they able to add these additional benefits into the program? 
And that brings us to the $716 billion that you hear so much about. You hear it mostly from Governor Romney uh, and the Republicans. Uh, what they generally say is that President Obama cut $716 billion out of the Medicare program, and then they stop there. And they don't tell you any further information. And, and it, there's kind of an implication there that that $716 billion was a cut in benefits. It actually is not. It's $716 billion in savings. And the way they got to those savings uh, is, first of all, by a crackdown on fraud and abuse, of which there is a considerable amount in Medicare and they expect to get further savings from continued uh, monitoring of fraud and abuse. What they also did is they removed uh, the, the Medicare Advantage subsidies from hospitals and insurance companies. And the way they were able to get to the hospitals and insurance companies to give on that or concede on that is uh, because the hospitals, as you know, with so many uninsured people, um, these people are descending on emergency rooms and emergency clinics uh, for health care. Of course, hospitals don't get uh, paid for much of that, uh, and they pass some of those costs on to the insurance companies. So these folks are creating a big problem for hospitals and insurance companies. Um, so they agreed to give up the subsidies if uh, more people were covered with insurance. Um, and therefore they would not have this problem. So, so there was a tremendous savings there. Um, also, as part of Obamacare, there's a rule that says that 80 cents of every premium dollar has to be used on health care. That means they can't use the money for salaries, for profits, for administration, or anything like that. It has to be on actual health care. And if they fail to do that, if the insurance companies fail to do that, they have to rebate the difference to their customers. And last year, uh, you may have heard, um, insurance companies were sending back over one and a half billion dollars to people because they did not follow this rule. Um, and it depends on what program you were in if you got any of that money back. So now what they did not do um, is there were no benefit cuts to seniors. Nothing was cut from seniors. There were no new limits placed on care, no new caps on benefits. And there is no, or there are no death panels. This is uh, one of the things that was used by anti, the people who were against the Affordable Care Act. They used this idea of death panels to scare senior citizens and families uh, in the 2010 elections. Um, and unfortunately, they unnecessarily scared people. What this panel is, is that it's a 15-member panel that is charged with finding uh, savings in Medicare on the provider side. And I use just a really, really simple example of this. For example, if Medicare is paying a dollar a pill for a certain drug that, that people on Medicare are taking, this group is supposed to try and find it for maybe 75 cents a pill or 50 cents a pill. Um, so that's the side they're working on. They are expressly forbidden by the Affordable Care Act from cutting anyone's benefits or from deciding on what medical treatment uh, should be held or given to uh, seniors. They cannot make any medical decisions about your care. So that remains between you and your doctor and there's no uh, diminishing of benefits. So that does not exist. Now they did use some of this $716 billion F to help with the 30 million uninsured. They did not use it all, but they used some of it, and that goes back to what I was talking about with the hospitals and insurance companies. They were willing to give up the subsidies if all these people became insured and came through the system and, you know, as they regularly should. So some of the money was funneled to um, Obamacare. So anyway, um, that is pretty much what, is, uh, exists, what exists now under Obamacare, you're still in a fee-for-service program, and it's pretty much as, uh, other than the changes that I outlined uh, here, it's pretty much the same. 
All right, so, so then what's in the Romney plan? How is the Romney plan different? Okay, so the two big things that you always hear Governor Romney say is he's going to re restore the $716 billion to Medicare, and he's going to repeal Obamacare on day one. So let's just take those two things first. All right, so if he restores the $716 billion to Medicare, you have to remember that since no benefit cuts were made to, to seniors' benefits, certainly the money is not going to go back there. And of course, we assume he's not going to give it back to any uh, abusers or fraudulent people uh, with Medicare. So where is it going to go? It's going to go back to the hospitals and the insurance companies. He's going to reinstate those subsidies. And of course, we know that, that Governor Romney is a privatization guy. He believes in the private or the free market, and so he wants those subsidies to go to the hospitals and uh, uh, insurance companies. So it will, it will mean no change for you, or no increased benefits for you. And then, of course, he would do away with the 80 cents rule um, when he abolishes Obamacare. Uh, so, so you will not be hurt, and you have not been hurt by the $716 billion. Um, now, also, um, when he repeals Obamacare, um, or at the point that if he's able to do that with Congress, uh, you will lose those benefits that I was talking about. Uh, the free checkups will go away, the free screening uh, exams will go away, you will go back to paying whatever co-pays and deductibles you were paying before. Uh, and maybe worst of all is that the donut hole comes back full bore. Uh, it doesn't go away and it doesn't lessen from year to year. You just get stuck paying 100% of your drug costs between that $2,900 and the $6,500 or so. And that is a very big thing for people who are in the donut hole. All right. so. Um, and that would cost seniors money immediately because that's going on right now. So you would absorb those costs right away. Okay, so now in addition to, to those two things, what Governor Romney has said is that current seniors can stay on Medicare. They don't have to leave the program. However, there will be some changes that will happen in that program that I'll get into in a few minutes here. Uh, he's also said that the changes will start with people who are now under 55 in the year 2023. So for the next 10 years, he says nothing will change. Um, he also believes in means testing. Means testing is one of those things that by definition sounds good in, in by definition, but in actuality it's something different. It means that those who have more money get less in benefits, Medicare benefits, those who have less money get more in benefits. But the problem is, is there's not a lot of people that have high incomes, like millionaires or billionaires or close to, to those levels. So they don't really achieve much in the way of savings from those people. So in order to get any real savings from, from the program, they have to bring that income level way down. And so you could find somebody hypothetically making maybe $40,000 a year uh, or having that in income, and then they'd be on the high end. And so their benefits could be cut because they were high end. Um, so means testing is a deceiving thing. And then pretty much after that, Ryan, uh, Governor Romney said he agrees with what's in the Paul Ryan budget plan. And that we know specifically about because Paul Ryan has written up his bu budget plan and he's put it through the House. Uh, they've had a vote in it, on it in the House of Representatives. So we can look to um, the Ryan plan, or the Romney, the Ryan plan, sorry, um, and see exactly what's in there. So first of all, um, Ryan, uh, despite the fact that, that uh, he is running around accusing President Obama of cutting the $716 billion, he too keeps the $716 billion in savings. Um, he, though, does something else with those savings, but his plan is figured on that. Now, Romney 
has said uh, that he would not abide by that, so we would assume that, that, that Ryan's plan would not work for that particular issue. But now the rest of the plan uh, pretty much states that in the year 2003, new seniors will begin to get a voucher, or as they call it, premium support, to purchase um, insurance vouchers, or insurance, uh, health care insurance. Um, now the, the vouchers, uh, the Democrats call it vouchers, but the Republicans call it premium support. And you would get this each year, and it would be solely to purchase the insurance, the premiums to, to cover your insurance. Um, you do have the option of remaining on traditional Medicare, and again, I'll talk more about that. The amount of the voucher that you would get depends on the costs of health care in your area. The voucher will be equal to the second lowest insurance program in your geographic area. So with the voucher, you could purchase either the lowest plan in your area or the second lowest plan in your area. If you wanted something better, um, a different program, um, something that would cost a little bit more, you would have to pay the difference in cost. Um, and then, as well, is since this only covers the cost of insurance, um, you would be subject to the insurance plans, the provisions and the conditions of that particular insurance plan. So whatever co-pays they have, whatever deductibles they have, whatever caps they have, if they're going to deny you for a pre-existing condition, you would be facing those things. Now, one thing that Paul Ryan has added to his plan is that he would include um, some pre-approved uh, insurance programs to choose from. Before, originally, he had it so that you just had to go insurance shopping on your own. But with this, you have a choice of uh, which programs you could select from. Uh, now, he's built cost of living increases into the program, but they're not very high. He builds it on the gross domestic product, the GDP of each year. That's not usually a very high number. It's not something like 5 or 10 percent, and especially in these difficult times, it's low. Like last year, the GDP was like 1.7 percent, and then he would add one half of 1 percent to that amount uh, to make the cost of living raise in the preview, in the voucher. So technically, doing that, you would have gotten, if, if this plan was in uh, effect today, you would have gotten uh, a, a cost of living raise of 2.2 percent. And we know that the cost of medical care or medical inflation is much, much higher in that. So those cost of living raises would not make up for uh, the increased cost from year to year. And then eventually they, he would, or the Republicans would like to see, and Romney agrees with this, the eligibility age increase from age 65 to age 67. Um, and that is particularly hard on people who, are, who do physical labor or do anything physical for a living um, because they are, by the time they're in their mid-60s, they are slowing down considerably. So that is not a help to them. So is the Romney-Ryan plan good for you? Basically, most analysis uh, agree, and, and I say most reputable analysis, like the Congressional Budget Office or the Center for Tax Policy, uh, the Kaiser Family Foundation, uh, organizations like that, have concluded that seniors would have considerably more in out-of-pocket costs under this plan than they would under Obamacare. Um, they project a figure, they use a figure of $6,400 per person per year of out-of-pocket expenses. Recently, there has been a Kaiser Foundation, or Kaiser Family Foundation um, uh, uh, study that has come out two weeks ago um, that has some different numbers to it, but it concludes that seniors would be paying considerably more under a premium support program than under Obamacare.
Uh, the other things that they project is that the insurance companies will make an initial attractive package to new seniors. Um, and that that would and then they would there from there select the healthiest seniors to insure and so the health the sickest seniors or the neediest of seniors would remain in traditional medicare and the problem with that is that under this system medicare is now in competition with the insurance company programs and if you have the sickest people in medicare uh, then you have the costs of traditional Medicare going way higher than the insurance companies with the result being that um, either uh, seniors will have to absorb those costs or the taxpayers will have to bail out the system or the system may just wither on the vine as a, just an unsustainable program uh, that just can't uh, you know, bear the costs of what it is, and that, that would include people who were grandfathered in under Medicare too, folks who are now over 55 in collecting Medicare. So that's pretty much um, a summation of the basic things on Medicare. I wanna quickly move to Medicaid because I think that this is a very important thing that most seniors and most families of seniors do not know about. There are many seniors who do not know the difference between Medicare and Medicaid and you should know this difference. Very quickly, Medicaid is the government program that pays for the poor. The poor meaning everybody, poor children, poor families, and poor seniors. And it's a partnership between the federal government and the states. The federal government sends money to the states with guidelines. The state then has, adds its money to the program and follows the federal guidelines and uses the, the money in the way that it should. What, un, well, under Obamacare, Medicaid is slated to increase because uh, Medicaid, under, well, with Obamacare, more people will be insured. So with the government subsidies, they're gonna need more Medicaid money. So there will be more Medicaid money going to uh, the states. Um, now how uh, Medicaid affects seniors is in two ways, basically. Uh, if seniors are too poor to even afford basic Medicare premiums, Medicaid will pay the premiums for them. But the biggest way that Medicaid impacts seniors is with nursing home care. Two thirds of the money, of Medicaid money now, goes for nursing home care um, or highly um, skilled nursing facilities. Like in Oregon here, we have uh, Project Independence that tries to keep seniors out of nursing homes, but there is Medicaid funding to that too. Now, what, they, what Romney Ryan would like to do with Medicaid is first of all, they would like to significantly cut back the, the amounts going to the states. Um, now, if you listened to President Clinton in the Democratic, uh, at the Democratic National Convention, he was saying that they would cut Medicaid by approximately a third. And the reason for this is that in the Ryan budget, which Romney concurs with, um, they have trillions of dollars in cost, in tax breaks, mostly skewed to the wealthy. Plus, they would like to increase defense costs. In order for them to do that, they have to significantly cut back every other program, including Medicaid. So they're gonna begin by cutting Medicaid fundings, uh, funding, and this would occur right away. There's not a 10-year buffer like with Medicare. Medicare cuts won't start until, or Medicare changes won't start in, for 10 years. With Medicaid cuts, they would start immediately. There's no 10-year buffer. In addition to that, they want to turn the program into a block grant program. Um, now what a block grant program is, is when the federal government gives each state a chunk of money, but they don't send any guidelines. They just give the money to the state and they, they let the state decide who or, or how each state wants to spend the Medicaid money. So you could have hypothetically 50 different Medicaid plans and so let's say the state, Oregon gets the state, uh, give, gets $10 million for Medicaid. They could decide to spend a third on uh, children, a third on families, and a third on the elderly. 
So between the cuts in, in Medicaid funding and the block granting, there would be significant cuts. And how would this in fact affect rather seniors who uh, needed to have nursing home care um, or skilled nursing care? Well, we just don't know. We have no idea what would happen to those people right now. So um, basically, uh, that is what would happen under Medicaid. I'm just going to touch very quickly on Social Security. Um, basically, you know what Social Security is now. It's a fixed benefit program. Um, it doesn't change. It's not subject to the ups and downs of the, of the stock market. It is solvent until 2033. Uh, the Democrats generally believe that uh, small changes such as uh, raising the eligibility age um, or uh, raising the cap on uh, taxed earnings can solve the problem. Um, and, and we may actually see those things. The Republicans basically believe the same thing that George W. Bush uh, tried to get through, which is the um, where some, of, some people can invest part of their Social Security funds into the stock market. And all you have to do, of course, is look at 2008 to see what could happen to your funds if you invest in the stock market. You'd also have to keep in mind that if you do that, any kind of fees, investment fees, would be paid by you out of your Social Security money. The one good thing that uh, Romney has said, though, is that he would not put these changes into effect for another 10 years. Uh, the, the way I close this program every time is to simply say, this is not the end of the line. Uh, we know that further changes are going to be coming to these programs, uh, even no matter who wins this next election. We know that President Obama is talking about his grand bargain again, where he uh, where we may see Social Security and Medicare put on the table. Uh, we know the simpson bowles study is still out there, and some Democrats are signing on to that. So it's very important for seniors and your families to keep an eye on Congress and keep an eye on President Obama or a President Romney if he prevails. And that, David, pretty much concludes the program. Right. Good. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much for being here, Linda. That's very, very informative. And I think sets out pretty clearly the differences between Obamacare and a Romney-Ryan uh, administration policy. Okay, very right. good. Good, yeah. So uh, Linda is with the Oregon Alliance for Retired Americans. You can get more information about that organization at www.ora.org. Or if you're not in Oregon, you can check their national website at retiredamericans.org. We Please join the Alliance for Democracy for a screening of We're Not Broke. This is the story of how U.S. corporations have been able to hide over a trillion dollars from Uncle Sam and how seven fed up Americans from across the nation have taken to the streets and vowed to make corporations pay their fair share. Screening date is Friday, November 16th. We want to thank our crew today for being here and getting us on the air. That's Roger Bates, Janet Morris, and Tom Thomas. And I'll thank the audience for watching, and we hope that we'll see you again next week. Bye now.